This was a terrible idea. Yeah. It's not even fun. I'm Tommy Vitor. And I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And today we're going to be drafting the most unforgettable political press conference moments. And the reason I guess this has been in the news lately is uh, I'm sure that you might have noticed a certain Senator Mitch McConnell make some headlines himself with some recent unforgettable moments at his own press conferences. Let's see that clip. Running for re-election in 2026. Oh, that's a... Did you hear the question, Senator? Yeah, it's hard to watch. Irrespective of your thoughts on Mitch McConnell, which I'm sure we have many, but just as like a human, it is tough to watch that happen. But there have been other unforgettable moments at press conferences in politics over the years. And so we thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about some of those. Yeah, believe it or not, it gets worse. Gets worse. Uh, All right, let's flip a coin to see who picks first. Call on the air, Brian. I'll call heads. Heads it is. Let's get this going. For my first choice, In this draft today, I'm going to go with Four Seasons Total Landscaping. Wow, what a beautiful day. Thank you. And I know know you won't accept it because of your hateful biases, but let's see if you can try thinking rationally. Who was it called by? All the, oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. All the networks. <laughs> That's hilarious. So the, the point of this whole draft is the most unforgettable moments. Even after four years of Trump mayhem, this stood out as just peak unforgettable. The guy clearly, first of all, intended to hold a press conference at a Four Seasons hotel. Mm-hmm. There was some mix up and we, you know, because we live in the dumbest timeline, he ended up at a Four Seasons total landscaping parking lot where he tried to downplay the fact that all the networks called it for Biden by doing that moment where he just goes, all the networks. But that's as if all the networks calling it isn't historically the exact thing that we all wait for. It's like, every like election tries, ever. It's, that is the thing. He's like, he's like, oh, all the networks have called it. But yeah, that's how it works. Fox called it first, you fucking idiot. <laughs> so that's why we get the number one spot here. For my first pick, I am going to go with friend of the program, Sean Spicer talking about the inauguration crowd size. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period. Even the New York Times printed a a photograph showing that a a misrepresentation of the crowd in the original tweet in their paper, which showed the full extent of the support, depth, and crowd and intensity that existed. These attempts to lessen the enthusiasm of the inauguration are shameful and wrong. Listen, some people out there might be thinking, Tommy, of all these options, why would you pick a press conference with a staffer? The reason is that moment destroyed his credibility forever. Day one, over for Sean Spicer. I remember reading this in real time. I just literally couldn't believe he was going to war over the inauguration crowd. The dumbest thing. The dumbest thing. And the most easily debunkable thing. There were satellite images. Like, it was (laughs) so easy to know that he was wrong. But he picked this stupid fight because Trump wanted him to pick a fight. It ended his career. It ended his credibility. It told you everything you need to know about the next couple of years and how things were going to go. It became an SNL skit. Like, he never lived that moment down. Yeah. For my next pick, I'm going with I Am Not a Crook. By, uh, by Richard Nixon. Great one. But I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Narrator, he was indeed a crook. <laughs> Look at you going historical. I'm so proud. This is yeah. great. Let's not fool ourselves into thinking that I have any context surrounding this. I just know that it's a very important moment in American history. <laughs> So, Tommy, why don't you jump in here and explain to us why this is so important? Okay, sure. So this was October 1973. He's doing a press conference in Orlando, Florida. Nixon was facing allegations of unpaid taxes, kickbacks from the milk lobby, and then Watergate. You might have heard of that. Who among us hasn't (laughs) taken some kickbacks from the milk lobby? Big milk. You love big ketchup. Less than a year later, he resigned. But like Nixon, he's just like the most corrupt, venal, like anti-Semitic, terrible guy. But what a moment. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go with, you inspired me, uh, man throws shoe at George W. Bush. Knew you were going to pick that one. So December 14, 2008, it's a press conference at Baghdad with the prime minister of Iraq. An Iraqi journalist screamed, this is a farewell kiss from the Iraqi people, dog in Arabic. His mistake was, you should have thrown first, 
scream second, right? And I think then he probably could have caught him. Yeah. This guy got a three-year prison sentence. He was released after nine months. He became a hero <laughs> all <laughs> over the Arab world. Uh, there was a statue of the incident was built in Tikrit, part of Iraq. I read that someone offered to buy the shoes for like $10 million. <laughs> Obviously, the Iraqi people were very upset about the invasion, the subsequent occupation, and the utter, you know, deplorable, violent situation that the country was enduring at the moment. Dana Perino, the press secretary at the time, now Fox News host, said, I don't think that you can take one guy throwing a shoe as representative of the people of Iraq. Counterpoint. Yes, you absolutely can. Iconic moment. Yeah. For my next one, I'm going boxers or briefs. Let's see the clip on that one. Mr. President, the world's dying to know, is it boxers or briefs? <laughs> Usually briefs. <laughs> I can't believe she did that. I mean, if you have uh, kind of an open mic with a, with the leader of the free world and you kind of want to make news for a moment, make some ripples, not a terrible question. One of the more memorable moments from the entire Clinton administration. Yeah, one of, because a more memorable moment is probably the reason why he shouldn't have been answering a question like this. But I guess, what do you do if, you know, if when you were with uh, Barack Obama, if, if you're asked a question like this, what's the move here? I'm guessing that he would have said something corny, like uh, Michelle would kill me if I asked, answered that and yeah. then try to pivot to whatever the event was about, which apparently was an MTV forum on youth and violence. So this was 1994. So there was a little bit of time. A lot ahead of us. Yeah. In terms of yeah, the, but she the was she was ahead. She was ahead of the curve. Yeah, she was ahead of the curve in terms of things we didn't want to know about him. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm actually surprised this one made it so far on the board, which is Trump's disinfectant injection moment. Oh fuck! And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. One minute, and is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. By the way, Brian is furious he didn't pick this I, one. It was number two on my list, and for some reason I skipped it and went to. Nixon's I'm Not a Crook, which was a great choice. Please factor that into your voting. This was the time when I watched all of these press conferences yep. every day. Yep. The President of the United States is out there talking about injecting bleach at a press conference. And like, what's up with Debbie Burks, his uh, sort of COVID advisor? COVID advisor is looking at him like, oh, how do I respond to this? Yep. The craziest thing I've ever heard. Anyone with half a brain immediately recognized that this was just the dumbest moment of like a pandemic rife with dumb moments. And the people who didn't have half a brain started doing it. And it led <laughs> to a spike in calls to poison control centers across the country because people were ingesting disinfectants, like household disinfectants in every state across the country. God, that sucked. I'm so glad that part's over. For my next pick, I'm going to go with stupid son of a bitch. Mm. Do you think it plays with that's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't seen that in so long. It's, it's just so perfect. It's like, sir, that microphone that worked for you 30 seconds ago still works. <laughs> Imagine being asked, hey, do you think inflation is going to hurt you in midterm? He's like, no. No, it's going to help. People fucking love inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. Like, it is just like a really human moment. And uh, I think a lot of the appeal of Joe Biden uh, in this moment. So, yeah, that's why uh, that's why I chose it here. Yeah, I think Biden called him after and apologized for being a jerk. Listen, reporters, their job is to ask questions that are kind of stupid sounding sometimes and annoying and troll you and troll you into response. And in this instance, Worked. he did his job. You yeah. know what I mean? He made a lot of news by getting called a stupid son of a bitch <laughs> uh, that he wouldn't have made if he had gotten sort of a more normal answer. So, you know, point deucey here, I think, unfortunately for Joe Biden. And, you know, look, you, you, if you want to be like the kind of avuncular grandpa, you probably shouldn't be calling the, the Fox guy a stupid son of a bitch. I def- you're right that the Democrats probably loved it. Yeah. I did. I had a good time watching yeah. it. I think we both quite enjoyed it. <laughs> we both had a good little time there. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to go with Anthony Weiner's resignation. So today I'm announcing my resignation from Congress. Yeah! yeah! Bye-bye, so my colleagues can get back to work. My neighbors can choose a new representative. And most importantly, that my wife and I can continue to heal from the damage I have caused. 
That was former Congressman Anthony Weiner. There was this massive scandal in 2011 that started when he sent uh, a photograph of himself in some tight-fitting underwear to a college student in Washington State. He initially said he had been hacked. Obviously, that was bullshit because all these other sort of inappropriate exchanges came out via his DMs and it ended in this press conference. This press conference is amazing because somehow uh, a writer or producer from the Howard Stern show got in and that's a guy you can hear heckling there. And he is yelling things like, Senator Weiner, are you more than seven inches? Like it goes on and on and on from there. And all these reporters around this guy are like, he's not with us. <laughs> this is a Howard Stern show guy. But also- like the AP. <laughs> Reuters. <laughs> so this was just like a complete circus. Any hope he had of like resigning in a dignified way or of getting some sort of like peace or closure out of this press event was gone after all these allegations came out. And man, it was um, memorable. Yeah. Okay, for my next choice, I'm going with Donald Trump versus Jim Acosta. One of the statements that you made in the tail end of the campaign uh, in, in the midterms. That here, this, here we go. That, Honestly, uh, I think you should let me run the country. You run CNN. All right. And if you did it well, your ratings well, let would me be ask, much better. If I, if I okay, may ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was enough. going to ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President. me. That's enough. But CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. That was just one day of a press conference, and they were all like that. You are a rude, terrible person. It's such a mean <laughs> thing to say to someone. I think Jim Acosta came off as a grandstanding asshole there, and Trump came off terrible as well. Arguably, I think, a lot worse. But it was the whole th Everyone lost. Everyone lost in that exchange. Trump's whole shtick is that he's like this, this tough guy. And the same goes with Ron DeSantis. Like, these guys predicate their identities on being like alphas, but they can't take basic questions from reporters like this isn't you know he's not like going into a brawl in a backyard like just take a question from jim acosta take yeah. a question from some reporter but he's better served by attacking cnn and the fake news of so course. his politics were like let's just hammer this douche yeah. and jim acosta was like allow me to be the perfect foil for you. <laughs> yeah. allow me to be insufferable and make otherwise well-meaning liberals find me annoying and somehow side with you in this case it was just absolutely terrible i can't believe this one fell so far oh uh, here we go obama's hot mic could have been number one my last election, basically. Yeah. After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and understand what That is Obama in March 2012. We were in Seoul, South Korea. I was there on this trip doing a press avail with Dmitry Medvedev, who was then the president of Russia. He was getting pushed out by Putin, who was coming back in. They're trying to negotiate something called the New START deal, which is a missile defense treaty and Obama's basically saying to him like hey man the election's about to happen once that thing's over the political challenges I face go away we can like have a more productive conversation and uh it got picked up on hot mic <laughs> and then Medvedev saying I'll transmit this to Vladimir was like my favorite part it yeah. just sounded so nefarious and then you know Mitt Romney picked it up I mean like what other secret deals is Obama making after the election and blah 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 and it was just a mess well it's that it's that pearl clutching that's so disingenuous because as if anybody doesn't know that when you have an election after the election that right. things that you know pressures are going to tamp down that you can have a little bit more leeway a little bit more freedom to do what you want so give me a break with that with that you know fainting couch bullshit every president in their second term feels themselves and does a bunch of things on foreign policy. Yeah. You have total flexibility. You don't have Congress. You don't have to worry about it. And then you can transmit the information to Vladimir. No transmit problem. Transmit it to Vladimir. Don't suffer through the Republican debates alone. Come join us on the Crooked Media Discord. If you go to crooked.com slash friends, you can talk with us, chat with hosts, meet other friends of the pod, get ad-free episodes, get bonus content. It's a lot of fun. Go to crooked.com slash friends, become a friend of the pod, do it today. That's our draft. Now we're going to do quick 30 second summaries of why we think our draft was the best. Brian, you're up first, I think. Yeah. You won the toss. I'm going to win the draft too. Let's go. We've got Biden calling Peter Ducey a stupid son of a bitch. A little fun little Bidenism where he calls uh, Ducey something that he was being. Uh, Donald Trump versus Jim Acosta, which perfectly encapsulates the mayhem of the Trump administration. Like when people think back to the White House's relationship with the press from 2016 to 2020, this is exactly what they'll remember. We've got Bill Clinton being asked, boxers or briefs? Uh, 
prescient because of who Bill Clinton ultimately turned out to be, but a pretty unforgettable moment regardless during what would eventually uh, turn into the whole ESPNification of politics. We have Richard Nixon's I Am Not a Crook moment, which is the quintessential moment from a criminal politician, not unsurprisingly suggesting that he is not a criminal, um, and would form the basis for a lot of the comparisons that we're making today. And finally, irrespective of all that other stuff, even if the list was just one pick long, it is this moment from Rudy Giuliani at the Four Seasons Total Landscaping parking lot. Obviously, didn't intend to end up in a landscaping parking lot, intended to end up at a much nicer hotel, and uh, also downplaying the fact that all the networks called the election, which is quite literally how elections are called in this country. And for that reason, I've won this draft. The fact that they thought they were going to a Four Seasons hotel and wound up at a landscaping company, it's like, it's so funny you couldn't write that into a screenplay, right? Like, nobody would believe it. Anyway, your list sucks. Okay, here's why I smoked your ass. First of all, the Sean Spicer inauguration crowd size press conference moment ended his career, and it told you everything you needed to know about the way uh, the, Bu- the Trump administration would treat the truth going forward. The Bush shoe throwing summarized the entire Muslim world's feelings about the Bush administration moment in one, I guess two, brief tosses. The disinfectant, uh, inject bleach into yourself, Donald Trump moment was maybe the most iconic, awful moment of those early COVID response days. Uh, Anthony Weiner, it's just, it's hard to imagine a press conference going worse for the subject of the press conference than getting heckled about your uh, size. Uh, and then finally, who can forget the hot mic? Barack Obama, Dmitry Medvedev, missile defense, global stakes. It had it all. So that's why I have far and away the best list. Well, you're going to need something after that Rudy Giuliani press conference, but a valiant effort nonetheless. You might remember from a previous episode where Tommy punished me with a ketchup-flavored Dorito. Uh, I hate this. So I figured if Tommy's going to give me a really shitty chip, I should give Tommy a really shitty chip. And so here we have the hottest chip... Oh, that exists. I can't do hot. This is going to kill me, you <laughs> well, fucking monster. Don't worry. We have milk, so that should make it all fine, I hear. I don't know. I haven't drank milk in 20 years. But, Tommy, I apologize to Hannah. Do it. I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, <Seth>. oh. <laughs> In solidarity, should I take a <laughs> In solidarity, Tommy, should I take a bite? <laughs> yeah, maybe. If you like these sorts of things. Oh my god, it won't go away. It won't stop. It's not stopping. The milk's not helping. <laughs> the milk doesn't help. That was terrible. I hate this job. <laughs> I hate this company. Here, you need some milk, dude. No, no I'm allergic to milk. But no, I get... Oh. <laughs> when I have really hot food, I just start. <laughs> <laughs> when did this become the full send podcast? <laughs> oh my god. It's not even fun. Yeah. <sighs> I can't believe you did this, this to us. This is a terrible idea. This is the worst idea I've ever had. Oh my god, it won't go away. <laughs> what have I done? Don't touch where you touched it. <laughs> Why did I do this? The hottest thing I have ever drank, uh, that I've ever eaten, <laughs> Frank's Red Hot. People eat this shit for fun. Do people like, like this? Really hot food. <laughs> if you like this show, <laughs> let us know in the comments who won. You can vote. Tell your friends. Please like and share it, because this is a fucking horrible thing to have to do to make a living. <laughs>